here downtown at the USS Constellation where we're shooting today. And our special guest is Mr. Isaac Taylor from Another Taylor Productions. And he has another event that's on the fringe and you want to get on board with this. So stick around, don't touch that dial because we'll be right back with Mr. Taylor right after this. Top of the morning. I'm Harry Cook here with uh, Isaac Taylor, and uh, from Another Taylor Productions. And uh, you have uh, some interesting stuff to, to tell us about uh, your company and also yourself and some of the things that you have going on. Yes, um, as I said before, I'm Isaac Taylor of Another Taylor Production. You can find us on the internet at www.anothertaylorproduction.com. The event that I'm promoting at this point is a masquerade affair. Masquerade affair is a big party. It's not a play. It's an interesting party because individuals coming together in a very upscale attire with the uh, traditional masquerade mask in a venue set up as the historic uh, Lyric Theater with great artists, great entertainment, and great food. Our plans are to have at least three to five hundred individuals within the uh, lobby area. We've converted it over to an actual party scene and we have a dance floor and other things that we're going to have there and we're going to promote the masquerade affair. Now is this the first time that you all have done something like this or, or have you done something? We've done, we've done things before. Uh, we haven't done a masquerade affair. One of the things we've done most recently was the all-white cruise affair off the Pentel Yachts. Okay. That one was one in which we did uh, July the 31st out of the Baltimore Harbor. Okay. Uh, great success. Everybody dressed in white. It was from, uh, I believe, 7.30 until 1 a.m. with the uh, after party at the Bazaar's over at the Pier 5 Hotel. Uh, individuals had a very great time. We had uh, Stacy Carver as one of our feature acts that we were working with there, mm -hmm. and of course, ghost, ghost host uh, Troy Rollins that was there to mm -hmm. actually uh, host the event. Okay, so now with this event coming up October 30th, um, you're a anticipating what? Anticipation on this would be about 500 people would be in this event. That is our anticipation. I'm going to cut it off at 550. Even though we can hold 750, I'm cutting it off at 550. I don't want to. I like I like to have an event that's both uh, you want people spacious to be able to breathe. and breathe, enjoy, and have a good quality event. Mm -hmm. And you can't get that when you get into the higher numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, just give me an example. Our last event that we just came off of was 159 people, which was on the yacht. That was at the capacity of the yacht at that time. So mm -hmm. you take that at times two. You can do some things with that. Okay, great. Um, what kind of, uh, are there any celebrities that you expected to participate? Well, or? believe it or not, we do have some celebrities, but the, okay. key is, the key is we have certain dates throughout the month of September that we're going to announce these special guests. Ah, so that's the key ah. with it. So if you take advantage of getting the tickets on an early standpoint, okay. you can reap the benefits. As the guests are added, the quality of the guests, the price will go up at that okay, point. Okay, okay, okay. So so people need to move on this right now then. If they're planning to come, that's the, okay. that's the best way to look okay, at that's it. Okay, that's good. Tell us um, how long you've been doing this um, sort of work. Well, promotions. I've been doing promotions, uh, serious promotions for the last three years. Okay. Uh, now, now you say now you distinguished yourself because you said serious promotions. Yes. So what's the difference between just outright promotions versus serious promotions? Well, yeah, we'll put it like this. Uh, <laughs> since 2001, I've always thrown parties, uh, different parties. Uh, okay. Home-based parties. I got you. And when the party, when you get to be serious, is when you have a home-based party upwards of 200 people. Mm -hmm. So once I got to the 200 mark within the house, I thought I thought it was time to actually take it outside mm -hmm. the venue and do it in a more professional atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, I did a couple of test labs. I did a uh, caramel and chocolate party on September 25th of 2009 at Martin's West. It turned to be a great event. Uh, upwards of uh, 280 people showed up for that particular event. 
Uh, later, I ventured out to do something that was a little bit different. We uh, ventured into a Atlantic City bus trip with the uh, party bus, went up to Atlantic City, uh, partying all the way up for a 12-hour occasion. And then within that, we went over to the 4040 Club, had the VIP set up, and just gave you that unique VIP P. Diddy experience. Mm -hmm. um, that was successful. And then from there, we've, we've migrated over to where we are now, which is the uh, White Party and now the uh, Masquerade Party. So then, from, from what I'm hearing, I kind of feel that you found a niche and this is something that you're going to be uh, committed to. There's a long a, haul. There's a long haul. And uh, just give you an example. Versus doing a, uh, a party every week or every month, uh, my expectations are four quality parties a year. But the key is when you look you look at the different age categories. I mean, there's mm -hmm. different ages for for different events. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something for the grown and sexy people. There's a lot of individuals out there who will love to go out to some of the major venues, some of the mature venues. But you still have to deal with some of the not so desirable elements. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what we have done is we've created an atmosphere that's quality, that are going to have individuals of a profession, and at the same standpoint, these are individuals who are coming to entertain and have a great time, not to come in and cause issues. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm pulling on those individuals who are who may have reached into the upper 30s, who, who are tired of the riffraff, who want to have a nice quality time. Mm -hmm. That's the individuals I'm appealing to. Okay. What can the uh, the old school folks like myself look forward to? Well, I'm old school with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to understand, with the old school, there's always a little flavor. I mean, the DJs and the we have, some of the guest hosts that we may have, maybe some of the old school performers, mm -hmm. other aspects. Uh, our music is versatile. We play a little old school, we go into hip hop, we, we do a, a, a wide range of entertainment. Mm -hmm. But one of the better parts that I can say is, as an old school member, you will probably find your neighbors and a lot of your other friends who have found the same event and you will have a great time there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. What uh, what, what, what kind of things uh, are the people saying, uh, As you know, along with that they've had a great time or whatever, but I mean, do you hear them really uh, demanding or, or anticipating more of this um, in, in the future? To Actually. Look forward to? Because there's probably not much for them aside from clubs and that sort of thing. Actually, that's, 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 places. that's what drove that what drove the idea. A lot of my neighbors came to me and, and mm -hmm. really enjoyed the events that I have done in the past. And they mentioned that one of the better parts that they love about my event is they have I have good quality individuals that are there having a great time. But most of all, you can relax. It's not a situation where you have to worry about uh, any fights or any any violence or anything of that nature. You actually have an event that is not oversold. Mm -hmm. the, the, the quality of the food is excellent. Most of all, the bartenders that I typically have in my events are uh, top notch. You definitely will get your money's worth as mm -hmm. if you're an alcohol consumer. Mm -hmm. But the quality of the entertainment is, is at that level too. What about the competition? There's, to be honest, there's always competition. But in the, in the class that I'm trying to place this in, mm -hmm. I haven't found much competition in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, comp there's a competitive rim from 21 through the 35 age range that's going to be very competitive. My, 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 my pool right now is from 25 and up. Okay. So based on 25 and up with the majority of the individuals who have attended or come to my parties being in the mid 30s, uh, they, they tend to say they'd rather come to one of my events than actually attend to a club mm -hmm. or actually do the travel to the mm -hmm. club because my events are mostly a package. Uh, it's not only a party, you may have a room package where you can actually have a romantic night with your significant other. Mm -hmm. There's other aspects that I bring to the table with the parties mm -hmm. that I throw. Mm -hmm. I heard you say about this area, so that leads me to this question. Is this something that you're, you're planning on uh, broadening out to other geographical areas or are you just going to stay focused here in, in the Baltimore metro area? Based on the type of parties that I'm interested in doing, I like to feel that I'm going to go into the aspect like Tom Joyner. I want to take it everywhere. So why not partner with Tom Joyner? Well, the key is I haven't <laughs> got that big yet. <laughs> Well, how big, do you, how big do you have to be? be you know, I think what did, what did they say? A small, a one small step, you know, begins is, is a journey of a thousand, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So, well, you know, Tom's he's selling out cruise ships right now. I'm just yeah. selling out little hundred and twenty foot clippers. So, yeah, yeah. I definitely need, uh, I need to have a, a bigger following than what I have at this point to actually be able to, to get into that elite style. But one of the things is, do I really want to get to that size, or do mm -hmm. I want to keep it at a nice balance to where you still have the quality, it's not overcrowded, and the individuals are still having a a good time but mm -hmm. the better part to it is most individuals that come to my events they make friends for life because they see the same individuals at my next of my next event and from there you have friendship and a camaraderie that everybody actually pulls to when you begin to plan 
for your events. Walk us through the stages of, of, of what goes into it because obviously it starts with a vision and then there are other things that you have to go into and do you have people that work alongside with you that you delegate um, responsibilities to and network with? Well, um, being that my, uh, my professional is a project manager, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into the initial part of it. I have an idea, I see a nice movie, or I see an idea from a different area that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I take it and I take a look at how I can actually modify that into a plan that's going to be successful across the board. So I look at the budget, I look at how many people, the venue, the type of food, entertainment, I look at everything and I, I lay it out. And the, uh, the plan that I have at this point is to actually follow different steps. I don't want to oversell my events, I want to make sure that, and, that, and that's just uh, our live uh, effects in the background <laughs> because we are down here at the Inner Harbor on the USS Constellation and like I told you all these are not manufactured sound effects this is the real deal we here go ahead <laughs> not a problem but but the key is right now is the grow very the grow at a very considerable pace but at the same time manage it but it, it, it stops when individuals say the quality is drifted away or that there's no uniqueness to it but you were saying that in your planning though as you go from your vision and you go through the stages. You you know, when you talked about the budget, yes. are there any fear factors involved at all? Because I mean, obviously you you know, you're a courageous individual and you're stepping out there and you're taking some risk. But but you know, what are there any fear factors or, or apprehensions? There's already in any plan there's always risk. And the risk that you have when promoting is you may not you may not get the people that you may not have an idea that the individuals would like to actually lock on to. So therefore, the money you've invested in that particular promoting, securing a venue, you may not get those returns. And that's a factor that you may have to take into consideration at any time. But are there any kind of, uh, are there any kind of precautions that you can take, like from past experiences or, you know, other people's experiences that would help you to, to look at the, see, notice the signs ahead of time and know not to go that far? And I want you to think about that. Okay. And uh, we're going to take a break and, um, We'll be right back with them too. USS Constellation. There's a grand lady in Baltimore who has taken her rightful place as the Inner Harbor's crown jewel in the heart of the Chesapeake Bay. Launched in 1854 as the last launched in 1854. A newspaper account from the day of her launch reported that there were eight pieces of the original frigate Constellation contained within her timbers. The Constellation is, is constantly changing. Uh, if you came on board a year ago, uh, you'll see something new today. If you come on a year from now, uh, you'll see something new then. Uh, we are, we're constantly working to improve the ship. All right, we're, we're back. And uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about with the uh, upcoming event, um, of course, there's a lot of people going to be coming. Um, first of all, what kind of costumes would they be wearing? I think you said earlier something about like uh, it's a it's a sexy formal affair. So what I'm expecting is what you would wear out to a New Year's Eve event is the actual outfit that you would wear. The mask is the actual effect on the costume. Okay. The emphasis is on the costume. But we ask that all the guys wear blazers. We like to try to go with the formal if possible. But if not, you can wear a suit, blazer. Ladies, sexy formal attire, dresses, and so forth. How can they get more information about this? More information can be found at uh, www.anothertailorproduction.com. On that particular site, we have the tickets for sale. We actually have more information about the masquerade party, and we actually have other past venues that we've worked with and some of the past pictures from past events. Okay, so that's another tailor? Another tailor production. Production. Okay, so that's real simple and easy. Um, you may even want to start tapping into that right now as we're talking about it. Um, this is going to be, now has the Lyric hosted something like this before? The Lyric did uh, another event uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. October 31st this time, a mm -hmm. masquerade party for a book signing. And it turned out to be a very great uh, event for them, a successful event for the book signer. Okay. So the key right now, I got permission to actually take on certain aspects of that, and I'm bringing the same person that was signing the last time into the lyric to sign books, mm -hmm. and we're going to actually push it forward based on that. Um, with the, uh, the the promotions that you're doing, um, I happen to have with me right here um, just one of your your uh, cards. I had to, did you put up? Where can people find these? 
Right now, we have those being passed out by street teams, beauty and barber shops. Mm -hmm. And at the same standpoint, if you want to download one, you can go to another taylorproduction.com and download the actual flyer. Also, if you're part of my Facebook family, you can check on to my site at another taylorproduction.com and you can actually well, put check like for Facebook. Let me ask you this. Since people are able to download it, right, would you encourage them to copy it and, and share them with friends? I encourage in, individuals to copy the actual flyers themselves, send out the Facebook notifications at the same standpoint, have them go to the website. Okay. That's a good deal. That's something to look forward to. All right. Um, Earlier, I was asking you about the, the risk that I've yes. and are there any telltale signs that you that you kind of like notice to help you kind of like uh, nip something in the bud, maybe, perhaps? <laughs> well, I mean, some of the telltale signs you look at on a good event, uh, one that's in demand based on the timing. Um, one of the ways you curtail it is you try to set the event out at the first of the month. You set them out during the time, like after tax season. You want to sell events not during a time with which I'm trying to place this one, which is back to school, end of the summer, first of September vacation. So those are all your risks that you will look at. Mm -hmm. But if you have a good marketing campaign and a good product, eventually you will get those individuals to come aboard. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference between doing an event in April versus doing an event in late August is uh, your turnaround could be a lot faster in April, whereas in late August, your turnaround time for an October event can be mid-September. But that's a benefit to the individuals because there's special pricing at this point for individuals to actually jump on the party at this point. Okay. If you, the closer you wait to that date, uh, the VIP tickets are going to sell out, uh, the general admission tickets and prices are going to go up, and you won't get the value that you could have gotten. What, uh, what, what, what are the, um, the, the, the particular personal benefits that you get out of it doing this? One of the better because parts. Because I can, I can tell, <laughs> I can tell that you know you, you just. This is just a part of you. You just love this. <laughs> I like partying. <laughs> I like partying. I like throwing parties. Okay. Uh, so my personal enjoyment is the satisfaction of having everybody around me having a great time. So you, you probably impacted a lot of a lot of people in, in the uh, in the process. Have you? Very much, very much. A lot of a lot of groups have come together. Uh, for instance, there's been a few people who have gotten married at a couple of my events. Wow. So wow. Uh, relationships are being built here. So, so if you're looking for a spouse, this is something you definitely want. <laughs> Look at you, the masquerade. <laughs> but go ahead. Not a problem. That's why we put that little disclaimer on the actual flyer. Okay. Uh, please come, but don't fall in love. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds good. We're going to take a break uh, right here, and uh, we'll be right back with more of another Taylor Productions on top of the world. Okay. Loop of War Constellation that's here in Baltimore today and the Chesapeake Bay has always been central to her story. Throughout her century of service, uh, Constellation served in and out of the Chesapeake Bay. It was kind of like coming home every time she returned to the Chesapeake Bay. She was, she was created here at Gosport Navy Yard. And throughout her career, she came to Annapolis. She spent many years there. She sailed to Philadelphia. She sailed up and down the bay several times. Uh, and uh, every time that she returned, it was like a homecoming for her. That's enough history for now. Let's see what happens when you come aboard Constellation. When you come on board, cell phones and everything don't work anymore. This turns into the 1860s and you are back in time on the Constellation learning what it was like to be here. People come on board and they, they get touched by this, by this walking through history that they're able to do and they're able to, to see the hammocks and see the officer's wardroom and, and sit in the captain's cabin and have this whole immersive experience that you're never going to get at most types of museums. So this is a really wonderful experience for them. And they have no idea what they're, what they're missing out on. And then they come on board and they keep coming back. We fire the cannon, turn the capstan, and ring the bell daily. And we recommend the free self-guided audio tour, which comes in two flavors. One perfect for children, the other for adults. Welcome back, and uh, we're here on the USS Constellation downtown with Another Taylor Productions, which leads me to this question. What actually is Another Taylor Productions? Another Taylor Production was a name that was provided to me by one of my good friends. Uh, after having so many events, he said, oh, go, oh, here we go again. Here's Another Taylor Production. Not another kinda, one. Here's <laughs> another one, and it kind of caught on from there. Uh, within Another Taylor Production, there's a couple different aspects that I put before. 
we have a paparazzi service. If you want to have that actually PDD feeling when you want to have a birthday party, you want the limos to pull up, the lights, the cameras, the paparazzi taking pictures, we provide those services for you. Get you into the club with the VIP access, all eyes are on you for that moment. So you don't have to wait till you get to Hollywood. You don't have to wait. All you have to do is just get to another Taylor production. You come to my site. I Check it out. Okay. Let me know what you want. Pick okay. the package. Okay. So, I mean, we can set you up with the Secret Service package. Secret Service package. Individuals dressed in all black. Uh, suburbans rolling in. Blazing. Cameras outside waiting on you. When you actually pull into the actual event, everybody's like, who are you? You're a who's who of America at that point. Okay. And we make you feel special. Uh, within that, you get a card from each of my paparazzi. And then your members in your group can go to the site, purchase different pictures from that. And you can actually see the shots for yourself. You don't have to pay for anything. It's for the services your guests they pick up the picture to picture tab the drink tabs and all the rest so you can be pitted for a night or be some celebrity that you want to be for a night okay okay so, so you can make some dreams happen I can make dreams happen that way that's one aspect of it other aspects of it we provide bartending services if you have a party you want to have a great bartender we can get you a bartender if you if you just want to have a party you don't know how to have a party call me we actually have services that can provide you budgeting planning we can set your dream up. We're sweet 16 parties. Whatever the party is that you desire or whatever the theory you have, come to me. Let's put it on paper and we can actually lay it out to where you can see your vision on paper and we come with the number with it and we make it happen for you. So that's those aspects of the actual company. Other aspects of the company, we throw parties, we do events, travel events, uh, destination parties. It's a real big thing that we're trying to get into during the 2011 season. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal at that point is to do some type of Brazilian uh, jump off where we actually go out with the you know, charter a plane and go down to Brazil and have wow. a great time. That's for the fellas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, there's many other things that we can do there too. Um, some of the past things that we've done from a trial basis have been like uh, going down to Jamaica with a group of individuals, like uh, 20, 25 individuals, going in and getting the room set up and just having our own little venue within a Jamaican resort and doing things of that nature. What was that like? That was very great. I did my 40th birthday party that way. Okay. And that turned out to be great. Spectacular. Okay. And um, as we're interviewing another Taylor, Mr. Taylor here. We hear uh, some of the sailors who are docked here uh, right beside us at the pier and they're going through their exercises routine right now so that's uh, another authentic sound effect that you hear. One that you might want to um, put into another Taylor production. Today. <laughs> you can you make people feel like they're part of a military regime or something? I can give you a military style party with the, with the drill sergeant and all. <laughs> you let me know what your desires are. I can make that happen. So, 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 uh, you know, on, on that note, have you all like catered to like um, like graduations or bachelor parties, bachelorettes, or even weddings? Well, some of the things that I have done is uh, the bachelor parties. I've done quite a few bachelor parties uh, during my days in Atlanta. So one of the things of which I've done is I've kind of carried that over into this particular segment of another Taylor production. You have your guys, you need a location, you need dancers, or whatever your, your goals are at that point. Come to me, let me lay it out for you. We come to an agreement and we make that happen on that day. What is the response like when you talk about the different geographic areas? Because you mentioned Atlanta, and here we are here in Baltimore. Believe, what is the response like? Believe it or not, it's a very good response up in the Baltimore area. Uh, each area I go in, a lot of the things of which I, I base it on is past performance. Uh, different areas I stayed in, like in Kansas City and Virginia Beach. I still have individuals from those areas that travel back to Baltimore for my parties. So once I actually get a group involved, they continue to come back. And they come back through travel. So it's like a destination party for them when they actually come out. So this, so, so you're not offering something that people may want to hit or miss because once they get bitten yes. they end up smitten you're part of the, you're part of the family at that point <laughs> you're part of the family i mean at that times are just that great when you come to one of these events wow and i know that there are a lot of people that want to uh find a place in a, in a way to have a great time and uh that's going to have some lasting effects to it and and something that they, they won't regret that's correct I mean, there's other parts to it. I mean, within my parties that I have, I have professional photography sessions. So therefore, there's, there's plenty of pictures being captured of the event. I have photographers available for that. Uh, if you want to have a private setting on a party, a great example in which I promoted within my masquerade parties that I didn't get a chance to put out. So you want to have a girls' night out or a birthday party or any type of other event. You can have that within my masquerade party. I set you up in a VIP section. I can have all the different ambiance around for whatever your venue is, and your the cost is minimal. It's just your individuals getting in. I'm glad you mentioned that about the cost because the question I wanted to ask you 
Have there been any times when you had to turn people away? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the all-white cruise cruise affair, uh, July 31st. It sold out in two weeks. But, I mean, have you had to turn people away because they couldn't afford or they were having financial issues? Or, or do you try to work with people and try to try to make it happen for them? What I try to do is, in the very beginning of the projects, I have special pricing. Like right now, there's special pricing occurring. Okay. So if you get if you if you if you have uh, financial challenges, well, if you plan accordingly, my events are five months out, four months out. Okay. So you have a chance to plan for them, but sometimes I've done uh, things to the effect of uh, payment plans. Okay. Uh, payment plans for destination parties have been one way I've done it. Other ways that I've done it is I have allowed individuals to actually take advantage of pre-pricing that is very affordable in the very in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But as we add the artists and we move forward, then of course the pricing then goes back to the higher end, which okay. is what you have to look at. So early bird, you get a good special, you get a good deal, and you're on board with everything. Okay. And uh, again, never an unsatisfied customer. There's uh, one thing I can say. There's always satisfied customers, but you can't satisfy everyone. I got because, you. Because uh, last event. They wanted the party to continue and continue and continue. You just have to cut it off at some point. So, so, so that 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 was the only thing that they weren't satisfied. They about. weren't satisfied. That it came the to an it end. Came to an end. They wanted wow. to continue. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna uh, take a break and uh, we'll be right back with more top of the morning Baltimore with another production, another Taylor production. Okay. But they enjoyed it so much. It really kind of surprised us. We thought it'd be more for us, the parents, but no, they, they loved it. <laughs> they had a good time. Yeah, they had a great time. So come aboard USS Constellation. And while you're here in Baltimore, be sure to visit these other attractions of the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. The Baltimore Visitor Center, a good place to start your tour of this historic city and region. The National Aquarium on Pier 3 near the USS Constellation Museum the Light Ship Chesapeake, and Seven Foot Knoll Lighthouse, both part of the Baltimore Maritime Museum. The Frederick Douglass Isaac Myers Maritime Park and Museum, headquarters of the Living Classrooms Foundation. Fells Point, an early American shipbuilding center, and the Fells Point Maritime Museum. And of course, Fort McHenry National Monument, where the people of Baltimore valiantly defended the city from the British during the War of 1812, and Baltimore's own Francis Scott Key wrote our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. So welcome aboard USS Constellation and enjoy your visit to the historic sites of the Chesapeake Bay Gateways Network. Well, we're um, we're back with uh, another Taylor Productions, and um, as we're uh, wrapping up this uh, this here production that we're doing with you, okay. um, I just want you to know that it's really been a lot of insight for me, and uh, hopefully it's been some insight and some uh, some some thought for some people that are listening and looking, and hopefully um, they'll want to follow up on this uh, invitation that you're giving them. Um, do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with us? One of the things I can say. If you come to one of my events, I expect you to be at all of them because number one, everybody has a great time. If you like the party or you want to have a light party with a good with a good crowd, come see me. So you say one time is not enough. You have to keep coming back. After that, they gotta keep coming, gotta back. Keep coming back. Again, again, and again, and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. <laughs> well, it sounds like you got the right stuff. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, that is another episode of Top of the Morning, and we hope that you've enjoyed the show. We look forward to seeing you the next time. I'm Harry Cook. Talk to you then. Bye. You can say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right.